First Take is brought to you by Goodyear, tires with a strong tradition of superior performance. And Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Get up for College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, Saturday morning live from Clemson, South Carolina. It all starts at 9 Eastern on ESPN and on Watch ESPN. This will be the second all-time meeting between five-time MVP Peyton Manning and 2012 MVP Adrian Peterson. Manning's Colts defeated Peterson's Vikings 18-15 in Week 2 of 2008. Manning threw for 311 yards and a touchdown, while Peterson had 29 rushes. Wow, that's a lot for 160 yards. In the past seven seasons, these two have taken home four NFL MVP honors, despite each of them missing most or all of one season. Very, very impressive. Stephen A., who wins this weekend, Peterson or Manning? Well, I think, Man I think Manning wins this game because Manning doesn't have to go against his defense on a Sunday afternoon. Adrian Peterson, Minnesota got bright after giving him the ball just 10 times in the first game. They've given him the ball 49 times over the last two games. Got a 134-yard performance against the uh, Detroit Lions and rushed for like 126 last week against San Diego. And obviously Teddy Bridgewater keeping the turnovers to a minimum. So the Vikings deserve respect for that. But Peyton Manning is Peyton Manning. Still got Emmanuel Sanders. Still got Demarius Thomas. Okay. His running game's got to step up with C.J. Anderson and Ronnie Hillman. They got to run the football. Uh, they got, they're only 18th in terms of their passing offense. But that Denver Broncos defense skip. They're the third-ranked defense in the NFL. They are number one against the pass, number six against the rush. DeMarcus Ware got three and a half sacks. Okay, you look at this secondary with Aqib Tlaib and Chris Harris. Chris Harris is a guy that's been on our show. He is big time, and we all know what Aqib Tlaib can do when healthy. His durability is always a question mark. His ability is never mm -hmm. a question. You combine that with the rest of the defense, the way Von Miller is going after the quarterback, DeMarcus Ware is going after the quarterback, the way they're playing as a unit. I don't see Adrian Peterson being able to do what he's done the last two weeks against this defense, but I see nope. Peyton Manning being able to do that against the offense. Completely For his offense against Minnesota defense. I'm all Denver in this game, and Adrian Peterson will not go for 134 or 126 against this defense in that city. And I I'm still in awe of all this Peyton has done talk. Peyton has lost it. He's lost his fastball. He never had a fastball, and he's still Peyton. He doesn't even have a run game now and he's playing at an extremely high level. I like him against Adrian Peterson in this game. I like him in the mile high, too. And I think the run game gets going, just like Justin Forsetta. You love that. You love when I side up with you. It means Thank good you. things for Skip Bayless. No, not really, but Stephen A., enjoy, the, enjoy weekend. the weekend. Good to see you, Skip. You, too. See you all on Monday. Have a fantastic weekend. Be safe. Joining us now on the phone is Cowboys corner Orlando Skandrick. Orlando is currently rehabbing from the knee injury he suffered late in training camp. Since 2013, he's led all Dallas defensive backs in interceptions and sacks. Orlando, thank you so much for joining us. All right, thanks for having me. I'm sorry I couldn't be there with you guys today in, in it, person in the flesh. It's okay. Well, I'm what not. What happened? What happened? What's the deal? <laughs> uh, just rehabbing. I'm just trying to, you know, do whatever I can to recover and regain the form that I was in before I got injured. All right, understood. I guess that's a little more important. But let's get into it. So your boys lost last week at home to the Falcons. Julio Jones had only three catches in the first half, and then he went off in the second with nine catches for 137 yards, two TDs. Orlando, what happened to your Cowboys defense last Sunday? Uh, I think we just let it get away from us. Um, I think we, we kind of had some technical errors, but you know what happens. That game's behind us. You know, um, the boys are looking forward to this Sunday, and I'm looking forward to watching them. Stephen A., give me just a second with my friend, Take your time. My, my friend Orlando, Take your time. because he has a bone to pick with me. Because when he mm -hmm. went down in training camp, even though I had called him all of last year the best player on my Cowboy defense, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't just jump off the horse at that point and say all is lost. Right. So I started saying, wait a second, it's not like he's Dion Skandrick. Go and so, go he, and so, as good so. as Orlando is, he's not Dion Skandrick. So I'm going to hang in with my Cowboys. But Orlando Skandrick did not like that. So the floor is yours, Mr. Skandrick. Uh, <laughs> Skip, I, I ain't too upset with you, but I mean, oh, um, thank you. I, I think it was a tough loss for our team. It was a tough loss for me. And uh, I think some players are players that, you know, Depending on like how you look at it, you can't replace them. It's not just what I bring, you know, to the defense, but it's what you bring to the team from a leadership standpoint, just from an experience standpoint. But I don't really have a point to pick with you. I just feel like 
she was talking about when you All said right. that. Well, I got that, and I will be the first to admit I missed you during the second half last Sunday oh, at Lord. Jerry World because you would have made a difference on Julio. I'm convinced of that, so I will give you that much. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, thank you. Go ahead, Stephen A. Well, you, I don't know why y'all want me to be a part of this. It ain't even an interview as far as I'm concerned. It's just a love fest with all of you cowboys. I, I mm. Look, Orlando Scandrick, you can play. You're a friend of the show. You know I got love for you, bro. But I have no love for your team. I think y'all are average. Even though you've got elite talent, somehow, some way, something will happen to get in the way. I'm sad. Very much so, in all seriousness, that you got hurt. And I don't root against you individually, cause, and neither my boy Dez, because I love me some Dez Bryant. But I just have a problem with the Dallas Cowboys always walking around like your champions instead of a team that hasn't won a Super Bowl in 20 years. Do you have a problem, or do y'all have a problem with me having that attitude? Not at all. I mean, uh, you got the right to have that attitude. We haven't won anything, and I think that we're striving for excellence. And Every day we're trying to get better around here and trying to reach perfection. And I understand people feel like we haven't won in a long time, but as a as an athlete and as a player, you know, part of the Dallas Cowboys, we try to just envision things. You got to envision those things so they can come true. So, of course, we're going to walk around every day and carry ourselves like we're champions because that's what we're striving to be. So, Orlando, as a team leader, tell me how much concern you have about Brandon Whedon playing quarterback at New Orleans this Sunday night? None at all, man. This Zero. Team was built, this team was built to survive injuries, and I think we, Whedon will be fine this weekend. I think our defense is going to show up, and, you know, I'm looking forward to this weekend. Good. Um, Orlando, I have a question. What do you mean this team is built to survive injuries? What proof do you have of that, sir? I mean, our offensive line, you know, our offensive line is great. Our running backs are good, you know. You know, and our defense is built to carry this team. Your defense? You mean Absolutely. without you, your defense is built to carry? Really? Absolutely. We're going to be How getting you some players back. Next, <laughs> we're going to be getting some players back next week. Next week, and we'll be fine. Yeah. Mm. And and by the way, Mr. Smith, how about a Greg Hardy and a Rolando McLean and a Randy Gregory will soon be back in Orlando? How? How much better will those players make this defense? A lot. You know, you can't even put – I can't even put it into words, but, you know, to have those players returning that are in the front seven, it's going to make it a lot easier for the secondary and for everyone else. How much do you feel you guys owe the fan base of the Dallas Cowboys, considering that you are America's team, unquestionably the most popular franchise in all of the NFL, yet it has been so long since the championship has come to Big D during the football season. I think Lose him? Hello? Orlando. Hello? I, th I think we, we, I think we might have lost Orlando. Yeah, I I'm like, not surprised. That was a very surprised. that was a very balanced just, interview. Mm -hmm. We had the I hater so. and the lover. Is, yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. I like I like I like Orlando. I like yeah. a lot of guys on the Cowboys. Mm. It's yeah. just that the uniform, the star, and the helmet, and at midfield, and more importantly, the pathetic Cowboy Nation. It makes me sick to my stomach walking around like they won something for crying out loud, sullying the the mantra and the legacy of this great nation of ours. Who who's known for being a winner, but somehow the oh. Cowboys are America's team without a championship in the last Get 20 years makes me sick to my stomach. That's right, I said it. That's okay, right. but it was nice for Orlando <laughs> to come on the show. Yeah. Right now. I got nothing but love for Orlando. And my man Dez, I mean, no, I ain't talking about you, Dez. Mm. I ain't talking about oh. you. You know what? How, how's Joseph Randall doing, by the way? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wait, the guy who touched the ball the first three times and nearly yeah, scored yeah, all three times? Yeah, all that yeah, guy? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know what's yeah, going yeah. on here? Beneath all that bluster that you just heard from that man, <laughs> beneath all that bloviation, mm. is nothing but, but, but fear. Freak. Because he knows it that freaks. as I get all my players back on defense, and then pretty soon <laughs> I'm going to get Dez back, and I'm going to get little Tony Romo back. And you know, and I know, Super Bowl, here we hey, come. Hey, you know hey, it, scared. and I know it. And hey, you scared. are scared hey, to death hey, of it. Hey, scared, scared, scared. Yeah. Say those names again, because you said those 
those names and then said if they you know when they get back you're assuming they're going to stay back you yep. sure they will stay back <laughs> are you sure yeah oh, yeah Lord they'll no. stay back stay in your psyche <laughs> and and they will haunt you from from about <laughs> december on uh, well well i can't wait i hope they're around come out. Right. we got to go to break I, s orlando Sissy, i hope they're around Orla i hope they're around <laughs> <laughs> Orlando, thank you for joining us. Yeah. We wish you a speedy recovery as well. Orlando, not Dion Scandrick. <laughs> There's a hurricane. You are, he's out of control yes, today. He is. Headed towards the East Coast this weekend. But as of right now, Philly and Washington are still scheduled to play Sunday. We'll discuss that after the break. Stephen A is having a good old time.